do a short video on a Seasons 4 uh, dual path unit in a Target store. This is in regards to some of the auto-generated alarms and service calls we've all been getting. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on some of the things you might be seeing and why. Target, last summer, updated a lot of these Seasons 4s what they called an optimization project. Several of you guys may have worked on these. We added a control board. This board is just for monitoring. It gives Target a lot more data. It doesn't change the control of the unit. The control is still done by the RTM module. But what they did is they added multiple temperature sensors and they also added current transformers on all the compressors and the blowers. So when they call for compressor one, cool one to come on, they know because they can actually read the real-time amtra on the compressor. So if they're calling for cool one, let's say you, like this unit here, maybe I'll back up guys, this unit here, I got a service call for uh, auto-generated alarm compressor number two. So I got here, um, when I got here today, it was not calling for compressor number two, cool two. That alarm is generated when Let's say yesterday when it was 95 degrees out, they were calling for Compressor 2 to run. And for some reason, Compressor 2's contactor, the current transformer, wasn't sensing any current. That's where that alarm is coming from, guys, just so you know. Um, there's multiple reasons. Compressor number 2 might not be running on this unit. The problem was that the filters on the evaporator coil, the outdoor path, the air filters are collapsed and plugged and the unit's freezing up. So I'm going to fix that today. I'm going to show you guys what I see in this unit here quick. But the filters are all collapsed and plugged. And that's the outdoor air filter. So this unit has two distinct air paths. The, out, the upper path is outdoor air from an economizer. So it's a 100% makeup air unit. The lower air path is separate compressors. But, without going into that too much further, I reset this unit. Got it running, but when you get here to a target, if there isn't an alarm when you get here, I simply just put a jumper on Cool 2 and got the compressor to run. And after, sorry guys, there. I just use one of these little Brian Bogowski jumpers, a little alligator clip with the wire cut off on targets. So now you can hear Cool 2 just came on. Contactor is now pulled in, so they will now be getting amp draw on this, so it's running. This unit has four compressors. This is number two. This is number one. This is the tandem and the second compressor here will start some stops based on the one motor. But this one here was freezing up. That's what was causing it. Some of the things I wanted to show you guys is even if it's not freezing up, this control is Target's control. Target has their programming back at FMOC. To command the unit to run when they want it to run. All of these controls are controls that came from Seasons 4 to protect the unit and get it to run within its design parameters. There's some really cool information here guys once you learn what they are. This low temperature control, this is a lockout for, for compressor 1, evaporator coil 1. This is the air temperature leaving the coil. This isn't the coil temperature. This is actual air temperature leaving the coil one for the one and one a compressors up there. This is ambient lockout. That's inside the unit in the in the hood by the air being drawn into the upper air path. This is compressor lockout. This is the air temperature leaving compressor number two's coil. These two coils actually are in the same air path. This is actually a sub-cooling coil. This is for the outside air, these two compressors. This is the upper air path, 100% outside air. It brings these two compressors on first. If that's not enough, then Target 
like I'm doing right now, I'm calling for the second compressor to run. That is bringing on a pre-cooling coil, so the air comes into this coil first, pre-cools it before it gets to the bigger coil. Because if on a 100 degree, 100 degree day, 100 degree outside air, you need a lot of cooling. But as you notice here, guys, you know, 43 degrees, these are lockout controls. Uh, what I found on a couple of these units recently on these alarms is when this this unit, the design point, when this coil gets down to 40 degrees, it will shut this compressor off. There'll still be a command for it to run cooling, and there won't be any amp draw here, so Target will get an auto-generated alarm because they're telling the compressor to run. The compressor probably ran for a little while until it got down below the design point of 40 degrees on a cooler day like today. It's only 77 degrees outside. When this gets down to 40 degrees, this will lock out and that little green light right there will come on. And then this relay won't reset until this temperature gets up to 50 degrees, the air leaving that coil. So this can look like an alarm some days to target. So I just wanted to show you guys what you're looking at here so that you understand. Um, if you go up to the prints on a season's far, they seem daunting at first. But I'm going to go right to the heart of the matter here, guys. Here is this compressor number two. And as you guys can see, if I get close enough here, that switch that I'm looking at is set to 40 degrees. So it opens when it gets down to 40, and it's got a 10 degree differential. It, it'll allow that compressor to run once that temperature gets back up to 50. We're down to 42. This thing will probably shut off on its own here, and it'll probably generate another alarm, possibly. But just so you guys know what this thing is trying to do, it might not be anything wrong with it. It might just be a cooler day, and the alarm may clear by the time you get here. But uh, just so you guys know, I've seen a lot of these kind of numbers written on these over the years where other companies, other technicians, engineers have came and messed with these set points. 34 is way too cold. Someone had this unit set at 34. I turned this one up last summer. This one is set at 38 as the factory set lockout on the first stage. The third stage, I believe, is 38 too. You guys can simply don't mess with these if you don't know what you're doing. Shows the set point. If I push that arrow, the differential, it's got a 10 degree differential. This one is set at 38 degrees compressor number three. So just wanted to spend a couple minutes showing you guys that. I'm going to do another quick video here in a second on just the basic layout of a Seasons 4, especially a dual path unit. The other thing you got here, guys, is all these relays. They all have lights on them, which is pretty nice. Something to keep in mind is you will find the coils for some of these relays on one page of the prints you will find the contacts on another page, so don't let that throw you. You just gotta do a little looking for everything. But they actually have some really nice prints. If you spend some time reading the prints, guys, this is how I educated myself, or how I learned how to work on a season four, is just going over the prints, spending a day on them one time, and kind of figuring out how it runs. So that's what I got for today. But auto-generated alarms on a season four, make sure you put your jumper on it, if you have to, down here, if it's too cold, you can adjust to this set point on these lockouts temporarily so you can test the compressor, make sure it's not low on charge, flat, high head pressure, any of those kind of things. Uh, we don't want to just walk in and say there's nothing wrong and walk out and have another service call a couple days later, guys.